Hello, welcome to another video in the Quick Start for Bounce Factory series. In this video, I'm going to show you everything that is in the Take Snapshot window that you may not be familiar with and show you some of the more advanced features. So this side of the window is based on the Pro Tools Bounce Mix dialog and should look pretty familiar to you. You have at the top where you put in your file name, your file type, and your mix source. And in Pro Tools, you can have multiple sources by clicking the plus button, and it will just push down the rest of the dialog rather than resizing dialogs. If you need to bounce more than one source, click the plus button, and you now see a dialog where you can set all of the sources that you might want to use. Then you can hit close. You'll still see mix source one here, but it will tell you how many you have active exactly the same as Pro Tools. Then you have the audio panel, which is always shown in Pro Tools, where you've got compression type, which is not used for anything other than movie at the moment. Um, file format, delivery format, again, this will only show up if you have more than one active source, and your bit depth and sample rate. Pad to frame boundary and the offline button. You can also add an MP3 just like you can in Pro Tools. Then the other panel that is always open in Pro Tools is the location dialog where you say whether you want to print into a session folder or choose a directory and whether you want to import the mix into the session after the bounce. Now normally you would select this in a dialog that comes up after each bounce if it is a file format that can be imported into the session, generally a wave at the same sample rate. So now let me show you some of the things that are special about taking snapshots and make it a much more advanced and fluid workflow. You'll notice, first of all, there's some color coding. So right now the sample rate is set to 48. Now, if I set this to 44.1, you'll see two things. The first is that this uses the SoundFlow searchable pop-up dialogues instead of pop-up menus, which at first glance is going to be a little bit different to you. You might think it's a little more cumbersome. Not only can you just select the same way you would in a pop-up menu, but you can search. So if you know you want 44.1, you can just type 44 and this will show you only the choices that are at 44.1 or pull-ups or pull-downs of that sample rate. And now I've selected it. What you'll see is that the color coding went from green to orange. So orange means this is a valid Valid choice. You can bounce a mix like this no problem, but it is not necessarily the most obvious choice or the choice that will allow you to do more stuff. So if I set this back to 48k, which is the sample rate of the session, you'll notice that it goes to green. And what that means is you are printing at the sample rate of the session, and you may have noticed some other choices actually became possible down in the location dialog, which we'll come to in a second. Let's set this back to 44.1. And notice that the uh, import after bounce has been grayed out. And so this follows all of the same logic that Pro Tools does. You can't set this dialog up to do things that are impossible. Now, let's say you want to set this snapshot back to the session sample rate and you don't remember what sample rate this is. When I work on records, often even within the same record, there are multiple sample rates. Every song is a different one. And so there are some buttons here called the fill from buttons. And that means you can fill a particular parameter from either the last snapshot you took, like we did in another video when we loaded the mix passes from a last snapshot. You can load from the current session settings or you can get some information from a selected track. So let's talk about the current session first. Let's say I wanna set the sample rate to the session sample rate. Instead of having to either guess or remember, I can just say set this to the session sample rate and now we're set to 48K. Excellent. If I wanted to set something to a track, I'll show you that in a second. If you want something from the last snapshot, you just click the L button. And up top here, you've got an L and an S that are larger. And this is to load the entire bounce mix dialog from either the last snapshot you took or from session information. The last snapshot will have info for pretty much everything. The session will have info for things like the directories and the sample rate and stuff like that. Okay, let's get into some of the more advanced features. So let's say I'm going to import after bounce and we can see that that is available but not being used because it's orange. I'm gonna click that. Now that turns green, some other stuff turned orange, but let's leave that for a second. If I'm importing the mix into the session, 
Now I've got my regular choices for where do I want to import it to. In Pro Tools, you can import to a new track or you can import into the clip list. And you can import into the selection, song start, or session start. The added bonus you get when you're bouncing with Bounce Factory is not only can you import to a new track or into the clip list, you can also go to an existing track. Now I'm going to cancel out of this dialog because I want to show you some of the power of these fill from buttons. Let's say that I want to import every single one of my mix passes from this snapshot onto the print track. This is just a stereo audio track in my session. So to do that, all I have to do is come over where it says destination track and click the T button, because if you remember, that will fill the information from the selected track. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. It puts print track in the destination track here. It also sets the import destination to existing track. So now when it bounces the R3, and we'll call this the main mix, it will print the mix at 48K 24 bit to whatever directory I tell it to. Then it will import it into the clip list. Then it will make a new playlist on the print track called Second Best Song Ever R3 Main Mix. And then it will drag the clip out of the clip list and put it onto the track. And I'm gonna have it put it at the selection because then it will be put where it was actually bounced. Pretty powerful stuff. Let's say now I want to look at some of the other options. If I'm importing after the bounce, export copy after bounce has been lit up as available but not being used. So now let me go ahead and turn that on. And this will light up another dialog. And this is based on the export clip as files dialog that happens in Pro Tools. So now what this is saying is go ahead and print the mix at whatever sample rate and bit depth you've got, bring it into the session, now that it's in the session, I don't care whether it's going to the clip list, a new track, existing track, it doesn't matter. It's in the clip list, which means I can export a copy and I can export that copy in whatever format I want and I can put it wherever I want. So where would you do this? My workflow very typically is if I'm mixing, let's say at 48K session, I will print a uh, ref at 48K 24 bit, and then I will export a 44116 bit copy into a different folder that will show up on a file sharing service and the client can go ahead and download that file. So I'm not giving them a full res file, both for security and for bandwidth issues, um, but I am printing at the full sample rate and bit depth of the session so that I can have that reference in the session for future. If I'm making more mix revisions, I can go back and forth very easily. You could also make this an MP3. And in the next video, I will show you how it works when you're bouncing MP3, Atmos, videos, all things that have more settings than are being shown in this dialogue right now.